Well, hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1962 Chevrolet 300 horse, 327 engine running. That's right, we're uh, not dragging a whole car in, we're just getting an engine run. So a little history behind this, my high school English teacher, he's had a couple of 62 Impala Super Sports for before I existed. And uh, he had this car running in the 80s, it sounds like, and then the car just kind of rotted away. So he wants to take this engine, get it freshened up a bit, and uh, stick it in his other 62 Impala Super Sport. So he reached out to us and asked if we would uh, take a look at it, put it on a run stand, you know, do all that fun stuff. So we're gonna see if we can't get it running. And Duff's gonna run away and bury his bone in a new snow pile because the other one melted. No, you don't want that snow pile? You want it over here? All right, you're a silly kid. Man, that Bronco looks good with those new wheels and tires. So it's too high in the back though, or too low in the front. I haven't determined yet. So story is this is like a 250 horse 327, but he found a 300 horse 327 and swapped heads, intake maybe. Looks like there's an adapter, so I don't know. It's got a Holly carb on it, that's not factory. I think you need the camshaft to make it a 300 horse too. Maybe pistons, I don't know a ton about these. We will uh, decode it and see what this engine decodes as, but he says it's his original block, so it should just decode as a 250 horse. It's got ram horn manifolds, no fan, water pump police. Looks like it was set up for a generator. Uh, three speed car, his other super sport is a power glide car points ignition still got the old canister style oil filter it's got the knob on the side for the clutch here so yeah small block chevy he said it's loose you know why wouldn't it be we'll find out when we get it inside that's what we're gonna do next we're gonna put the cherry pick together get it inside well that's a nice big snow pile to bury that bone in that'll be the last one to melt i'm thinking that's a weird dog All right, now that we got this thing inside, we gotta get it on my run stand. In order to put it on there, we gotta take the transfusion off, which sounds like he's gonna either put a four or five or a six speed behind it, or maybe the factory automatic. Anyway, it's not getting this three speed, which is not an overdrive. It's getting something different. So we gotta take that off. I got some adapters back here. Look up to the bell housing. We gotta swap the clam shell style engine mounts onto here for these early rubber ones. These are the ones that uh, the rubber fails and the engine lifts up and the fan hits the shroud and the throttle linkage sticks and they drive through the back of your apartment building. But uh, my stand's not set up for those, so we gotta swap those. And then uh, I think that's pretty much it, right Duff? How does the starter bolt on on this? Oh, it bolts to the uh, bell housing. Sweet, so we'll probably have to find a starter. Awesome, because we haven't uh, swapped a starter in several weeks. Uh, this is a run stand my buddy made that I used to work with. It's just pallet racking, cut down and uh, welded crookedly and very poorly. And it's got four swivel casters, which you never do. This thing just wants to spin in circles and you push it across the shop floor. You always do two stationary and two swivels, you know, like a shopping cart. Uh, I just got some cheap gauges back here. Well, actually they're Stuart Orners and a ignition switch that looks like it got busted off the last time it was used. Good thing there's a spare key on there. Who's that? Oh, the teller with Richard and Janet Bradbury. And I got a starter solenoid down there. This thing, the only thing it's set up for is Ford flatheads and small block Chevys, which I have adapters to put uh, LSs in here as well. So that's all that's been in this thing. Flatheads, small blocks, LSs, because we can't get Fords to run. He wanted me to, you know, like I said, check everything over on this thing, prime the oil pump, and then uh, run it up to temp. There was some really cruddy looking rusty water coming out of uh, what should be coolant. No, don't sniff that or eat it. But, so we might need to flush that stuff out too. Oh, it does have camel backs on her. Camel humps, whatever you wanna call it. Block heater, all the good stuff. I think he was saying it was a pretty low mile rebuild, which it's not super, super greasy. Oh, these early ones had uh, flat screws holding the timing covers on versus a 
quarter inch bolts, which it's got one there. Cool stuff. Oh, and they didn't trim off the uh, water pump gaskets when they put the water pump on there. Not a big deal. Just something I do. Oh, and he used gaskets on the china walls instead of silicone. What the French? I don't know if I can blame my English teacher for this or uh, whoever he had to do it. Let's uh, round up the parts and swap some parts. Get that in the stand, eh, Duff? Okay, I can tell you're gonna be a lot of help. You need a bath again. Oh, yeah, Fival has uh, been in here as well. It's got a lot of fecal matter down there and a pretty good amount of mouse house up here. So, I think for my setup, I think we gotta take the clutch off, which he's gonna go away with the flywheel, go to a flex plate anyway, but we'll get that off and out of the way. And if he was gonna run a manual transmission, I think you would want a new clutch. Then there's some mousy stuff in this one too. So we'll blast that off quick too. And then we'll go to the engine mounts. All right, uh, this stand could use some improvements. It's kind of a pain to get it in there. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> Anywho, it's in place now. I'll get everything all snugged up. Like I said, we're gonna have to find a starter. Hopefully it's got provisions for a uh, automatic starter. Should, should. Oh yeah, I can feel the bolt holes down there. And yeah, uh, that coolant is not going down the floor drain. I mean, it's not coolant, it's biodegradable masses of sorts how dare you so i think now uh yeah we're gonna figure out what the heck this thing is for sure and what it started life as and then we'll uh do some more digging into it right that's clearly not antifreeze you'd be drinking it if it was yeah he doesn't like that okay so we did some uh research so the stamping number back here is three seven eight 2870, which decodes this as a 1962 through 1965 327 cubic inch small block Chevrolet engine. So that matches up with what he's saying is that it's a 62-ish engine. Oh, well, I said it's a 62. So this J220849 is the last seven digits of the VIN number of the car that this came out of. And this F0218SB is the number we're looking for. So F means it was built in Flint. Michigan, you know, where the good water is. Zero 02 means it was built in February. 18 mean it was built the 18th day of February, so four days after Valentine's Day for all you lovers. And SB is the code we want. Usually they're uh, three digit codes, but on these earlier ones, they were sometimes two digit codes. An SB is a 1962 300 horse, 327 with a four barrel and a power glide. So he said that this is a three-speed car and that he converted it to a 300 horse. So maybe he's mixed up and this is actually the uh, 300 horse car. Or maybe his car was an automatic. Or who knows, maybe this SB stuff isn't as dead on on the internet as it says where it's a automatic car. But anyway, that's what this decodes as according to nastyz28.com. Be careful Googling that site. It's a uh, 300 horse 327 from 62. So... The numbers are panning out thus far. 
Oh yeah, these early small blocks, instead of having a quarter inch bolt, they got Phillips head screws holding the valve covers down. As if they didn't leak bad enough the way they were. Looks like the road draft tube has been modified. That doesn't look stock like they were. Like I said, that holly doesn't belong on there. So now I think we're probably just gonna pull some spark plugs out, maybe sneak a peek with the schlong down the cylinders. Put some oil in them because A, this is not my engine and B, this is not so much a rare engine, but a pretty good engine, you know, a 300 horse. Well, that's the other thing, those 62 to 65 castings could be anywhere from 200 and 50 horse all the way up to 375 horse use the same block according to uh, nasty28.com but yeah it's because it's a pretty high horsepower engine we're going to uh take as good a care of it as we can and also since it's not ours so i'm gonna pop those plugs out take a peek in there see what's going on i think he said he was turning it over regularly but i know how that goes you turn it over once every eight years so all the plugs look like they got a bunch of anti-seize on them and that one's really oily. And that one's got a little humidity in there. That one's pretty good, just a bunch of anises. So I'm guessing he'd opened it up and oiled the cylinders at one point. Maybe it was recently, maybe it was 10 years ago. Who knows? Oh man, he had the oil in there real thick. Ew. Oh yeah, he definitely oiled her down. At least it's nice clean oil. So, let's see if we can turn it over by hand. So I don't think we need to oil the cylinders because as you can see from my drain pans that aren't catching any oil because I got them out here too late. He had this thing uh, chock full of oil. So we should be good there. But uh, let's drain the old oil out, put some new stuff in, pull the distributor out, and then uh, prime the top end. Probably wouldn't hurt to pull the uh, valve covers off just to make sure all the valves are opening and closing. And then we'll also uh, check the casting numbers on the heads as well. We do know they're Camelbacks, they're early ones that don't have the uh, provisions for the uh, front mount accessories. Which I think some of the later ones had. Could be wrong. Anyway, we will do that. We'll uh, drain the oil, pull those valve covers off, and then we'll prime it. And then with the valve cover off, we'll be able to know when we got oil all the way to the top end here, because that's the last place to get oil. Right? Right. Bottom up. Okay. Here we go. Draining oil. See just how bad that looks. Do these things have those ginormous drain plugs? Sure do. What are we gonna have? No water, I hope. Oh. It's pretty black. There's no water at least. Oh, she's got a Fram. CH200. All right, we're gonna stab that drain plug back in. And we got ourselves a new canister type oil filter. We got a Wix 51143. And then we're gonna pull that distributor out and we're gonna put our priming tool in there. And we're gonna pull the valve covers off and we're gonna see if we can't get some oil to come up top to the uh, rocker shafts, rocker assemblies, rocker arms. Rock and roll hoochie coo. You're just dog tired, ain't you, Duff? Rough day out there. So I'm going to take this old filter housing canister, let it drain for a bit, scrape the sludge out of the bottom. But also, the kit comes with a new O ring. Well, it's not an O ring, it's a seal. So you got to pick the old one out. You don't want to stack these up because uh, otherwise, you got a mess on your floor usually. See how many we can find up there. Oh my. She's really stuck in there. There we go. So 
Sometimes they're a real bugger to get out of there. And sometimes there's like two or three stuck in there. But this time there's only one, so we lucked out. So we got a new filter slid in our canister. And then we gotta slip this gasket, seal, o-ring, whatever you want to call it up in there. Put it all back together. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Looks like these drain plugs had copper washers on them, so that's a good seal. Six o'clock whistle, Duff. Better get home for supper. All right, we're gonna go with the uh, Chevron De Lo 400 XLE. It's a uh, sin blend, heavy duty diesel engine oil in the uh, 1030 concoction. And we're gonna spill the snot out of it. Just kidding, these uh, breather tubes are really good for filling. I'll still screw it up. Well, just a little bit. We're also gonna put some zinc additive in this thing as well, just cause we don't wanna wipe out any cam lobes. Cheap insurance. Five quarts of that stuff, and then we're gonna put in some Rizaline three times concentrate zinc additive supplement, whatchamacallit. Now before we pull that distributor out, I'm gonna turn this over to top dead center number one and make sure that this distributor is pointing at number one. And then we should be good to go there. Can't screw it up putting it back together, right? Don't answer that question. Where is the timing mark? Oh, there it is. Don't worry about it. Looks like zero is right about there. What are the odds it's pointing at number one instead of five? 50, 50, 90 rule, right? 50, 50 odds, 90% of the time you're wrong. It's pointing back here. Do we have the plug wires not in the right spot? Which one of these would be number one? Probably that super long one. I think they had number one up here. So, uh, yeah, we're 180 off. Spin around one more time. That's better. I usually like number one to point straight at number one. So it looks like we're one cylinder off, but we can address that. Let me drop the new one in. So, in case you didn't understand uh, that I had to turn that engine over another 360 degrees, one full revolution to get that timing mark to line up and the distributor only turned 180 degrees, that's because the crankshaft gear is half as big as the camshaft gear, which is tied to the distributor. So it takes two full crankshaft revolutions to get one full camshaft revolution. So you got your intake stroke, and you got your exhaust stroke. So that's why I had to turn it over. It was pointing at the 18436, so number six cylinder, as opposed to number one cylinder. So that's why I spin it over 180 degrees. In case you didn't understand, but I'm sure most of you guys do, but some people like that worthless knowledge that Morsky likes to spread. The more you know, right, Duff? It bores him to death. Oh, this one has got an actual metal tab holding the distributor down. I thought these early ones had the uh, spring style, which I really don't care for. Hence why they went to the metal tab. Also, this one's got the luby dube nipple up here for lubing up your bearings in your distributor. We should be able to lock this guy right out of there. Make sure there's not a bunch of crud around it that's gonna fall in there. Slide her right out. So, here's the gear that runs off the camshaft. Turns the distributor. At the bottom, it's got that slot that drives an oil pump. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop a tool down there. It's basically the same thing as a distributor, but it doesn't have that gear. It's just got the slot. And we're going to use that to turn the oil pump to prime the system. And then also when we're done, we're going to angle that just a little bit to the left so that when we drop this distributor and it's pointing at number one instead of pointing at number two. Nobody loves number two. Who does number two work for? Who does number two work for? Here we got our priming tool, which is basically just a dummy distributor without that gear. It's got that flat driver down at the bottom. Drop that in there. Make sure it lines up. 
feel it engaging in the oil pump. And we just gotta hook a drill up to that. First, we're gonna pull those valve covers off so we can tell when we get oil up there. Man, look at how clean this thing is inside of there. Not many miles on that rebuild, just like he said. So yeah, inside the head looks really good, just like the valve cover. A couple of chunks of dirt that came in there when we popped the valve cover off, even though we blew it out, you're gonna have that. A little bit of uh, rust starting on these rocker shafts, just from the humidity that we got up here. Oh, how can we date these things? It looks like they're 461s, which is a really common camelback number. I'm guessing there's a date code. Probably that B63. Maybe they're uh, February of 63s. Could be. But yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter to us. It's not like he's uh, building numbers matching machine here. And uh, yeah, they're camelbacks and they're super clean. I've never seen a valve cover that clean on a used engine. So hopefully this side doesn't have any surprises either. I wonder if they were having some problems with this side. Looks like they put some tub and tile caulking on this one. But again, super clean under there. What's the code on this one? B153. Yeah, I don't know. It's a 461 though, so at least they match. All right, let's see if the old Millwalt hybrid here, or d whatever you want to call it, it's got enough snort to get some oil up here. You guys keep an eye on those. Let me know when you see some oil popping up right there. I can smell the drill. It ain't happy, and we're not getting any oil yet. We'll give her a break and jump back on it in a second here. All right, spin her up again. Man, the old Dewaki's getting pretty warm here. We still not getting any oil. Hmm. You got any ideas, Duff? We're on your lunch break. My bad. You can smell that thing. Gross. That thing's gonna be on its way out. We're gonna need a drill sponsor here shortly. All right. Uh, I guess we keep cranking on her, and hopefully it comes around. What the heck? I don't know what else to do. Turn it over a little bit. Maybe it's got a spot in a bearing where it's not an oil pump up. Or maybe we pull the uh, oil pressure sensor out because it's airlocked. This is the risk you run of just starting these things up after sitting for a while. I know I never, I think there's only been a couple times where we primed them that 235 and that 61 and that uh, 74 Blazer 350 engine. That one had a bunch of water in it and wouldn't prime up. Oh, I think the only reason we primed that one is because it had no valve covers on it. All right, we got the big dog, the old skill out here, the corded one. Hopefully that thing's got enough oomph to get some oil up here. Otherwise, things is going to get ugly. Son of a gun, we're finally getting oil on this guy. Also, I think I found which... Uh, Valve is sticking on us. That's what number four exhaust. Well, let's keep at it. Hopefully, we start getting some oil and some more. We got four on this side that are getting oil, and five on this side. I think what I'm going to do is turn the engine over just a little bit, and maybe the weight of the cams pushing on the lifter or some clearances in there will open up and we'll get oil in a few more spots we're gonna have to figure out top dead center number one but sacrifices are gonna have to be made also let's uh try to get this number four exhaust open i'm guessing it ain't too stuck maybe maybe not There we go. She's still not quite.
bite. Maybe we'll spray some oil on it. It'll come out of it. Cycling it a bit. And we may as well hit them all. Got her bumped over a few degrees. Now let's see if we get some more oil to a couple more rockers. I think we got every one of them except for, oh, that one is getting oil now. I think we'll keep doing that. Turn it over a little bit. Try them out. You can hear a valve snap, but I don't know which one it was, but we'll uh, throw a distributor in it and then we'll uh, find a starter, start cranking it over and see if we got compression in every cylinder and all the valves look like they're doing valve things. And then uh, we'll be ready to do the uh, spark and uh, fuel thing. We got oil, so that's good. You don't want to fire them dry. So now if we want our rotor pointing at number one, it looks like that slot's got to be pointing at like between three and five. We'll call it three. So we'll use this to aim where it needs to be. Man, it looks like it's pretty dang close to where it's got to be. Hey, meow. Meow. That was lucky. So you start out a little bit counterclockwise of where you want it to be, because when you drop it in, it's going to spin right. Clockwise. There we go. Pretty dang close. Close enough. So, snug that hold down strap up a bit. Don't even need our fancy wrench because there's no firewall in the way. Now I want to find a starter. Get this thing turned over. Check for compression before we throw a bunch of new ignition parts at it. If only we had a starter sponsor. Look what we found on the shelf. It's a brand new slightly used ish ac delco yeah flint michigan oh man remanufactured in china son of a biscuit well i was pretty excited about it for a second no not so much but let's throw her on there hopefully she is the right one i think this is 168 tooth worst case scenario we just throw a different flex plate on it now we're talking right duff all right all right all right all right, all right, all right. Got our proper starter bolts on there. Blew the holes out. I think we just gotta hook up our battery cable and our solenoid wire. We should be able to crank it over. Well, we gotta hook a ground up in a battery. I'm getting there though. Well, what do we got for batteries around here? Well, it looks like Nancy's on the charger. Hopefully it's charged up. We just gotta make room for it. And hook up the ground. Too much stuff. Up that there. That guy there. Where's our ground cable at? You. Come with me. Hook her up to the factory stud where it's supposed to be hooked up. And we'll hit the key, see what happens. Well, what happens when we bump the switch? There's an oil shooting everywhere and the key snaps off. Let's uh, let's use our spare new key. Oh boy. I don't know what much better. Nor does it work. We might uh, be needing a new switch here. No cranky crank. How come? Oh, because this blue wire ain't hooked up. Well, now. Hey! Starter sounds good. Now you're getting excited, ain't you? Give her a couple zings here. Oh, 
Oh, let's let's put that away. We don't need that getting dropped somewhere. Valve's all doing valve things. Sure looks like it. How about compression? Oh yeah. Nothing on number three though. Why is that? Dang. Five and seven are good, but nothing on three. Is one of these not going all the way up? Oh yeah. Looks like the exact. Exhaust not coming all the way up. Give me a little croy of love. There. How about now? Still nothing. Play there. Maybe we'll put a little lube in that cylinder. Oh, she's pushing some ugliness out. rings. Let's see what we got on the even bank. Bang. Not much on four. Yep. I think that was one with the stuck valve too. I don't know if I can show you this, but this might be part of the problem. Maybe that's just anti-seize, but there's some sludge in there. Well, it should run on six, and maybe uh, getting some heat into it will bring those rings back. Hopefully. I don't know what's going on in there. But this was the one that had a stuck valve on it for sure. All right, I'll play around with this a little bit. Let's see what happens. So we took this sweet air cleaner off and matching wing nut. How bad is it looking there? Well, pretty good. At least there's no critters in there. And right on the front of these uh, hollies, you can get, I don't know what they call it. There's the list number. You can use that to find a kit and application, but right above that is C6 OF-9510-N and you do a little googling on the interwebs and it looks like this is a 1966 Ford Fairlane or Comet GT390 carburetor so she's got a Ford carburetor on it it's a semi-desirable carb I guess I would say being a 390 four barrel carb from the 60s but anyway it's a Ford carb what's it vacuum secondaries I don't know a ton about it carburetors but I'm guessing since this runs your secondaries that would be vacuum looks like it uh, had an automatic choke on it it's got some electrical tape around it so somebody's been messing with that at one time it is uh, free so that's a plus but I don't want to get into that thing I think if anything we're just gonna try it on this one and then we'll maybe uh, swap something different on it to make it run like an Edelbrock because uh, I got those around and uh, I think this would have had probably like a four jet, Rochester four jet, I'm guessing. I don't know what the 300 horse engines had. I know the 250s had Rochester four jets because that's what my wagon's got. Well, let's uh, put a cap and uh, rotor and some points in this son of a biscuit and some uh, spark bulb wires. I did uh, spray a bunch of croil down those uh, cylinders, the uh, numbers three and number four. 
yeah, three and four. So hopefully they'll soak overnight. We'll get that swapped out, and then I think we're shutting her down for the night. Hey, Duff? Yeah, he's already passed out. All right, let's do that. I think their uh, points are a 2270, and it's a 311. These are standard ignition parts. Yeah, like you guys wanted to know. Cap rotor, got the points gap to uh, 30 thou. Uh, threw the valve covers back on, just try to keep any debris out of there. Uh, if we can't get any compression out of the numbers two and three, we'll, uh, or numbers three and four, and we'll have to play around with that some more, but I don't think it's the valves. That side was kind of sticking, but I don't think it is anymore. So yeah, hopefully uh, soaking overnight helps free up those rings otherwise get some heat cycles in it probably should but tons of compression on the other six so should be good to go stick some plugs in it and uh hook up the plug wires and then see what that carbonator does i don't know if it's gonna be real happy after 30 years of sitting these hollies like to leak when they're uh sitting over winter so 30 winters probably ain't gonna be good yeah, we're getting pretty dang close. That being said, I think we're gonna shut her down for the night. And, uh, see you guys in a minute. In a day. A minute in a day. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, yeah, you guys said don't, don't sing anymore. I won't do that. You gonna sing? Oh, it hurts your ears. All right. Well, look at what we got in the mail. The old Dipstack DS300. Guess these guys want me to try this thing out they think it can compete with the schlong so uh i think this is dipstick jimmy we're calling it right duff let's uh take a peek inside these cylinders they've been soaking overnight because we like uh soaking the cork while you are soaking in the cork you can also massage at the grapes what do you smell through that garage door Freedom. Freedom. All right, let's uh, take a look-see in here. This thing comes with, I don't know, probably four and a half miles worth of cord. And it's it's girthy, just the way they like them. So, you guys don't care which side is up or which side is down, do you? So I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is clearly cross hatching Still on the cylinder wall. Focus, as Wetch, as Watch West says. Look at that cross hatchery. Never mind that uh, build up there. You can see a little bit of the uh, sludge that was on top of the piston down there in the lower left corner. But yeah, this is the one that doesn't have any compression. Number four, one of the ones that doesn't have any compression. Hopefully the rings come out of it, otherwise, uh, yeah, it's worthy of putting a set of rings in, I guess, or taking it apart. You could probably just clean them up, loosen them up, put it all back together. So I don't know, uh, this thing's got, the cord is a bit girthier than the old schlong. And like, why would you need that much, like, we're not going through HVAC ducts, unless we want to, like, sneak across the border into Mexico. Maybe they got cheaper gas down there, huh, Duff? So, uh, my review, it's, I like the cord on the other one because it's shorter and not as thick. The monitor's a little bit nicer, a little bit better color, clearer. Oh, and it comes with a, a nicer carrying case. So yeah, depth stick, check them out. It's all for your joy, because there's nothing like an endoscope op of me. Yeah, give yourself your own colonoscopies at home. Just kidding, don't stick anything up your butt's hole, especially something you bought off the internet, or that you bought at the grocery store. Uh, but it is waterproof, you know. In case you want to probe inside your cooling system that's got water in it. Semi-rigid cable, yeah, it's it's very rigid. 4.3 inch super TFT LCD screen, whatever that means. It's a full hydraulic 1080p image video output. And it's uh Paul Blue Blart. Yeah. 
2.0 image tech and it's got a super powerful 18650 lithium battery there you go it's pretty swanky also this one you can uh, flip the view 180 degrees like the bobcats the right way bobcats upside down right way upside down how freaking neat is that it's got a whole bunch of other buttons i don't know what they do though i know what this one does probably gotta hold it shuts jimmy the dipstick off so now that we uh checked inside the cylinders and they look freaking awesome let's uh see if we can find some spark plugs i'll clean up these j8s i guess if that's what we got to do why do i not have new j8s on hand i don't know my bad and see if this thing will pop off give or tickle the hot sauce you don't look impressed i wonder if we should tighten up these carburetor bolts probably Probably. All right, I'm gonna figure out our spark plug situation. So here's what we got for spark plugs. These are Autolite 303s. Don't ask me why I got them, because uh, that was the cheapest plugs I bought that day. Um, I guess I don't have a problem with Autolites. But then again, I don't mind Champions. Everybody hates Champions. So you can see they're a little bit shorter than the J8s. These 300 horse engines call for a little bit different plug, but these are gonna work just fine. Uh, the way I usually tech check that is you spin them around and you make sure that the electrodes sit the same depth so that it's not going to hit the piston or something like that. And you can see they're pretty much the same thing there. And we can always spin these out if he uh, wants to run some Champion J8s or NGKs or Delcos, whatever. These work just fine. So these got to be gapped to 35 thousandths. Look at this cool little Champion spark plug tool. It's part number CT-413. I really dig these weird tools. So it's got a taper gauge, you can slide that out. And then you know if you want it to be 10 thou, 25 thou, 35 thou. Kind of like your standard tool here. I'll get one of those out for you. This is kind of basically what I use. Oh, that's where your gap opener goes. I thought your keychain always went through. Oh, you slide that in there and that opens your gap? Gosh, you learn something new every day. Most of them don't say that, do they? Sure enough, they all say that. I didn't know that. I thought you just stuck this in there and pried on it. No, you pry in there. Gah, I even taught myself something. So I got freaking dozens of these things. That one's a Max Craft. That one's a PT tool. I don't know what that is. We got an actual champion one in there, O'Reilly. And these things are like pogs. You guys remember pogs? Have, these would be like a slammer. <laughs> So, uh, this one's even got millimetrics on the back side. Maybe they all do. Oh, sure enough. What about the champion one? Yep, that does as well. Gosh dang it, and they all say gap open. Well, that one doesn't. That O'Reilly one, that one's a POS. Sorry, O'Reilly's. PT Tools got it. Champion's got it. Where's this champion made? Patent pending, that's all it tells us. Gap opener. Really, it's only uh, the O'Reilly's ones that doesn't have that. But the O'Reilly's ones, oh, that's the gap. Oh, I do kind of like the O'Reilly one better. You just slide her in the end there. Ooh, plus it kind of doubles as a screwdriver on your keychain. Well done, O'Reilly's. I take that back, what I said about you. So, uh, squirrel, got a little sidetrack there. We're going to try this thing out. A buddy sent me a picture of one of these he's like oh i'll trade you for something i'm like i'll just go on ebay and buy one i think it was like 20 or 30 bucks because i i ge geek out on this type of stuff so this got your bend bar you put that in there we'll, we'll work on the j8 and you hook that little hoop d in there and you just pry her open or pry her closed so you got the bend bar oh they broke the bend bar off on this side though dang it I'm going to have to find a better one, though. I just drove the market up on the uh, CT413 tool. You guys are going to be all bidding these things to the roof. So it's got all these different gauges of wire. 15, 20, 35, 40 thou, 35, 32, or 30, 32, 25, 28. And it's also got a file, you know, for uh, cleaning your nails up or uh, filing your points. <laughs> Let's see you uh, file points with one of these guys. Pretty excited about this thing. Plus, you can carry it in your wallet, you know, if you were really hardcore mechanic. Uh, it just needs, like, a money clip on it, because who carries cash? 
So anyway, 35 thou. Slide that guy out. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This is freaking awesome. Way better than that other tool where you gotta read where it's at. I like the end bar on there. Good to go. Your uh, Morski cool tool of the week. Oh, that one's a little bit wide. Let's close her up. Where's our bin bar? Champion had all the cool stuff back in the day. There we go. Open that one up a bit. Oh! Yeah, we'll give her a little, little squeeze. Mama's got a squeeze box. Daddy never sleeps at night. Oh, yeah, you guys hate when I sing. Sorry about that. Oh, better open that one up a bit too. Squeeze me. All right, slam these guys in there. Oh, that's the other thing is, uh, I think on some of the points, these are 13, 16 hex. Uh, some of the later ones, like in the, I suppose, you know, 70 to uh, 73, when points came out, 74, something like that. Some of them were five ace hex, so watch out for that. I think there's different ones. I don't remember. Most of the ones I deal with are 13 16s. So that's what we're gonna use to slam them in. Cool tool of the week. Drive the prices up through the roof, guys. And gals that are watching, or if you got somebody in your life that likes weird stuff, go on eBay, get them one. No regrets. Hey, what is this one? Oh, this? Uh-huh. That's my credo, no regrets. Mm -hmm. You have no regrets? Dad? No. Nope. Like, not even a single letter. Well, we got our plugs in. We're gonna uh, put some spark plug wires on there. I think these are uh, part number uh, 2823 exact fits. I like them because they're black and they're not orange or red or yellow black plug wires and i think if you take some glass cleaner and run it over them you can wipe that writing right off it give it that cool sleek factory look that's a tech tip thanks to david freiberger or maybe it's brake fluid i think it's glass cleaner maybe we'll try it out maybe we won't i just really hate colored plug wires another thing i hate with craggers and side pipes and Flexi hoses. So this thing's got a carburetor adapter kit on it to go from a square board or a spread board or something like that. The settle brock has got both patterns on it. So I could take this adapter off, but I don't know what his plans are. The settle brock, somebody, plenty wood, dirt wood, some, some wood, somebody sent it to me. I don't know why, what it was for. Oh, I think it's for that 66K20. That's what it was for. Anyway, it's supposed to be good. I think he took it off of a Mustang or something like that. Anywho, did I write his name on it? usually try to write names on things. I don't know. Somebody sent it to us. We're gonna try it out. Uh, we're gonna take the old super scraper, clean the gasket surface up, put this new used gasket on there, and see if this thing fired. This is the cheesiest adapter I've seen. So I got a hold of the customer and he said that he last ran this thing. He figured it out. He said it was right when he quit farming. And he said that was in the fall of 79 slash spring of 80 he didn't farm so uh it's 1979 1980 so uh this thing's been off the road for at least 42 years we'll just call it 40 years but anyway yeah we added 10 more years onto this thing so let's uh clean this up God, how did this ever seal up around all that nonsense it's like a crappy casting but it's not upside down because you want your 
you know, these tapers to go that way and not the other way. I don't know, maybe it's a really nice piece. Somebody's going to yell at you and be like, oh, that's a Mr. Gasket, yada, yada, yada. Okay, we're going to clean her up a little bit. I don't like these adapters. I would rather have the right carburetor or the right intake. I'm not a big aluminum intake guy either, you know. I don't make big horsepower. They're kind of like headers, you know. If you got one that works, great. We're not doing go fast things around here. But I really don't like adapters. It's just twice as much hardware to gum loose, uh, twice as many gaskets. They look cheesy. They're like wheel spacers. Don't use wheel spacers. At least you're not risking the death of you and your passengers and the people you meet on the road with one of these like you are with wheel spacers. Ugh, gross. Get the right freaking wheels or the right rear end or whatever you need. Oakley dokley. Oakley dokley. Back to scraping. Ever told you how much I love these things? I love them so much that you guys keep buying me out of them that I can't get anymore. So hopefully in the next couple months we'll get another load of them. Yeah, these things is good. So this is an Elbrock 1406. You can tell because the list number on these is right down here, 1406. Uh, 1405 is a manual choke 600 CFM. Is that these go by? And uh, 1406 is an electric choke. 1405, manual choke. 1406, electric choke. 600 CFM. And was it the 1404 is the 500 CFM? And then I think it's the 7s and the 8s that are the... Uh, or the 750 CFM. Anywho, this is probably your most common carburetor that I see up here because everybody puts electric choke on the uh, 1406. Nothing wrong with the 1405 either. Really good all around carburetor. I like these things. They don't make a ton of horsepower. They're, uh, you gotta get the metering rod set if you wanna play around with all the settings. All you can pretty much do is your idle mixture screws, but out of the box, super good. Adjust your choke a little bit. Pretty much set it, forget it. They don't ever freaking leak. Just don't give issues. The only thing is I don't like this nipple because then usually everybody just runs a big old rubber hose and boop. But uh, they do make a kit that's got like a banjo bolt that goes through here. You get rid of this, goes through here, fitting comes down and wraps around to here. And then you hook your hose up to it or a steel line up to here and then you just got a little chunk of hose. And I think it's even got a little fitting in it for uh, if you want a fuel pressure gauge in it. But I don't like this part about them. I wish. They had it angled down or something because it's always, I don't like the way you hook, hook fuel lines up to these. That's the only thing that I can hate about them. Then they don't make good power, but uh, they make pretty good mileage. Pretty good all around out of the box carburetor if you ask me. All right, enough rambling here. Oh, that was what I was going to tell you. I like to uh, grab the throttle and make sure everything opens and closes as it should when you uh, hook it up. Cause uh, I've had ones, especially with these adapters and you're swapping carburetors, the butterflies will bind on something, a gasket. I think that was on a quadra jet on that 70 K20. And then that green K10, that had an Elbrock on it. It's probably one of the only Elbrocks we've had on here. Maybe we put one on that 66. I don't remember what's on there. Anywho, yeah. The throttle stuck on that thing. Didn't really stick. The blades just stuck open enough where it wouldn't uh, idle down. So, always check to make sure your uh, throttle's doing what it should. What's this guy doing? Let me check the secondaries. That goes open like that. Why do the secondaries not open? They're mechanical on these things, ain't they? What do I know? Everything seems like it's moving. Let's uh, let's put a coil wire on it and uh, hook up an ignition wire. See if we got spark. We'll get the hot sauce out. Oh, also these plug wires are for ram, not ram horn manifolds. Well, these plug wires should be super long and they should fish down here and underneath and come through the uh, engine mounts. Really terrible design, so they're a pain to replace. But that's where these uh plug wires are supposed to go but we don't have the right plug wires so they're just kind of laying here these back ones are fine these front ones i hate when people run them over like this they're supposed to the front four 
these two and those two so let's come down around back behind the bell housing i think uh i think the plug wire holders are over here anyway there's a plug wire holder that bolts there and then i think there's some on the oil pan and they fish around and go into that engine mount up here and then there's another wire holder there super long well yeah just like these you can see where they taped them up where they had fished them through there sorry for banging that distributor cap on your house sir get off my lawn he says anyway you can see how long those plug wires are get the right plug wires i don't have them on hand because uh can't have everything these will work hopefully we don't burn these off it'll be just like having headers if we burn them off people ask why i hate headers it's because they always burn off plug wires even if you get the right plug wires headers Blech. so many things i hate today all right spark testing time one of these wires is uh, supposed to just plug in. Oh, here's a, my HEI connection. I don't think I've ever had an engine with points on this thing. Oh, I'm sure I have. Flathead forwards. So where is that hooked up to? Right there. So if we hook this yellow guy up and run him up here, he, it's clearly never been burned off by exhaust. We hook that up. We should have uh, power up here. Provided that wire's got continuity. So the big boot on the coil wire goes into the coil. And the small one goes into the distributor. All right, let's see if we got some sparkage. Just bouncing right off the carburetor. There's no fuel in it. Hold on, let me hook the battery up. Oh, it sparked. So, uh, I feel like the points are, oh yeah, well, when we set them, the points are open. I don't know if we turned it over. We haven't turned this thing over since it's had plugs in it. You ready? Ooh. All kinds of sparkage. Well, now we just got to give it a tickle of hot sauce. See if it lights off. I suppose it's going to be that easy there. Sleepy pup. Maybe. I forget who it was, somebody sent us some uh, two-stroke oil. Said, so use that. So we're pulling out all the stops. So we're gonna fill the bowls on this Edelbrock. You know what I really hate when people spell Edelbrock, Edleybrock, when they're trying to sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace? I don't hate it, I just, I like people with good grammars and spellings and such, you know, because I was so educated myself. This thing's just gonna light right up after sitting for 40 years. Fresh point, fresh used Edley Brock carbonator. Oh yeah, squirters are working. It's gonna be good. We should just hook a fuel pump up right away, but we won't. Where's my keys? In my pocket. Remind me to put a new ignition switch on this thing someday. Here we go. Hopefully the timing's close-ish. Slingshot, engage! Slingshot, engage! Should have spark. Got compression on six out of the eight. Let's check spark again. Kind of spark. Not even a backfire. We had the timing way off. Let's advance it a bit. Actually, a lot. That was a whole bunch of gas came out of the uh, cylinder or coil. You want some more advance or what? Well, now we're, uh... you know what? Let's just hook a fuel pump up. As much as I was pumping it, all the gas that we had in the bowls is now in the engine and we're out of gas in the carburetor, so. I know this thing's gonna run, it's got it. Even if it's on six for a while. So let's uh, set up our fuel pump. Problem is, 
We sold the pickup that had fuel tank in it. I don't know if we got a spare. We got a new one we haven't set up yet, so it's gonna take me a bit. It's gonna take me a bit. You guys are gonna see me in a second. All right, found one of my tanks. Well, my last remaining one that's wired up to a pump. So, put this guy up. So the gas is by the battery and not by the open flames. And the clamp up. Or we'd be tightening it down. Tomato potato. Tomato potato. Once in a while you will get a float to stick on these other blocks. That's about the only problem they ever seem to get. Look up on our clickety clack. Ooh, let me hook this up to the key. I bet. I bet, I bet, I bet. Then we're gonna have to shut it off every time. Got the coil wire. Now, we turn our key on. Pumpy pump. Oh yeah. Let's do this, Duff. Our battery's gonna be dead. We gotta swap out starters. Starters. Batteries. Starters turn slow. Much, much, much later. Let's pull some plugs out, see what they look like. Pretty wet. Oh yeah, some of that sludge got on my spark plugs already. Clean that up a little bit. Oh yeah, I don't know what that sludge is, but it's in a couple of these cylinders. Okay, that uh, brake cleaner hopefully A cleaned the plugs up and then dried them out a little bit. Let's see what we got now. Just ain't, it's only firing on one. Man, those things seem like they had a ton of compression when I put my finger over them. I guess we could do a compression test. Or we can pull those plugs out and put some oil in there and boost that compression like everybody gets so excited about. We can't pull this one down the street to get it turned over faster. We could hook my new Delco starter up to 24 volts. I feel like that would void the uh, warranty from China. This thing's supposed to be easy. Well, I think we'll pull some spark plugs out, do some compression tests. We'll probably end up with some disappointment. Seems like six of these cylinders. They had more compression than anything we've ever made out of. Anything we've ever seen. Plugs are definitely wet. Let's check them for spark. Just for S's and G's. Ew. Ew. Spark on that one. I'm sure they all have spark. Usually if you got spark at one, you got spark at all. Clearly a lot of uh, fuel in those cylinders though. Oh yeah, sparking all the plugs. We're just gonna see that side's fine. Let's uh, check top dead center again. Pretty much where we need to be. 
Alright. Do some compression checks. 95. 50 actually. Oh yeah, it's just have a wide open. 70? Maybe these rings just sat too long. That one's only 50 as well. 50 again. Man, it sure felt like it had some good compression. I was almost disappointed at that 95. No, I'd kill for a 95. Twenty. There's an eighty-five. I think that's what we're hearing. Fire is that eighty-five and that ninety. Another fifty. Oh man, that is disappointing. We're gonna play the pull the plugs out a million times and squirt oil in the cylinders until we get it to pop. I think this engine deserves a set of rings. Well, I don't know, it's uh, it's time for a Wibby. Have you got any Wibbies left in here, Duff? Nope, we got iconic blondes from Ramos Guy, so. And that'll have to do. Gah. I don't know why I didn't just grab the one right off the top there. It's really a task to pull those plugs in and out and squirt oil every time you want to start it. It's messy. I just can't talk myself into doing it yet tonight, so. Maybe that uh, Tiffany will come talk to us and have a breakthrough. In the meanwhile, I think I'm gonna spray a bunch of croil in the cylinders and maybe that'll liven those rings up. I like Marvel, but it's just so hard to figure out a way to get it down the cylinders without making a mess. I'm sure I could concoct something to make it work. Maybe that's what we'll do. Figure out a way to squirt some uh, Marvel in the cylinders. What say you, Duff? Marvel? He's like, yeah, that's the right thing to do. All right. You just can't get a funnel in there, and you get a hose and a funnel, and I only got two hands, and one of them's drinking a sandwich, and he's of no assistance. But I do have that Peener uh, Schleider tube thinger. Yeah, you heard me whistle. You thought I was whistling at you. I'm not whistling at you. That uh, lube gun thing, we can just pull it out of the bottle and squirt it in there, maybe. See what happens. We gotta get some oil in them cylinders. We gotta get some compression. We need some compression in a can. Duff, you should invent that. Compression in a can. He said it's already out there. It's called the Ether Bunny. Cosby sauce. Okay, here we go. Well, there you go. If you uh, wanna squirt some Marvel down the cylinder walls. Get yourself a Mighty Vac model MV8 6851 fluid extractor. It works pretty good. What is that? 200 milliliters? I don't know what that is. Quart? 0.2 quarts. Quarter of a quart I got in most of the cylinders. Except for the ones that were at top dead center. Still made uh, a pretty good mess because that's what we do around here. Don't worry about that, Greta. That concrete is well seasoned. So now I'm going to leave this thing sit overnight. And I'm going to enjoy a couple sandwiches and respond to all your guys' responses because it's Monday night. Now, typically that's when I get most of the comments. So, that being said, you guys uh, comment down below what your favorite engine is. Are you a Ford Flathead guy? Or are you a Ford Banger guy? Banger being model A engine. Are you uh, in Ford Cleveland's, Ford Windsor's? Big block Chevys. Hemis, which generation? Two JZs, Cummins, five nine, six sevens. Power strokes, six two diesels. 2.3 Pinto engines. What's, what's your favorite engine and why? What's my favorite engine? Who, today? I'd say, what it, was it a Gen 2 Hemi, 426 Hemi? I really want one of those. I watched the uh, Roadkill episode today where they uh, the, the Hemi Grammy. I think I think Freiburg City had twenty thousand dollars in that. Yeah. 
I've never paid twenty thousand dollars for a vehicle. Ever. So there you go. Comment down below. What's your favorite engine? And why? We're gonna go drink sandwiches. We isn't me, Duff. He's old enough to drink a dog beers, but he chooses not to. And I'm alright with that. You don't choose a drink? That's great. You wanna have a sandwich with me someday? That's great too. Put some towels down in this mess on the floor. Before we shut it down that night. Is it a clean shop? It's a happy shop, right, Doug? So this thing's been sitting full of marvel for a couple of days now. So uh, we gotta get this thing running because just like last week, we're running out of time for content. Chin's got stuff going on this weekend, so he's gotta get this edited. So pretty much I got tonight and tomorrow night to get this done. And even tomorrow night's probably a stretch. So we, we pretty much got tonight. All right, let's... Uh, I think I'm going to turn it over slowly by hand to get some of that oil out of there. He said he'd been oiling this thing, which makes sense because there was some stuff in the cylinders that was kind of looby dooby And uh, the plugs have been out a lot, so who knows? Uh, hopefully we can get some compression back. So we're going to turn it over real slow with a bar to try to get that oil out because you can't get much oil in those cylinders that got the big old piston slugs all the way to the top. And we were looking at... So yeah, it's got the bigger ram horn manifolds with the uh, two and a half inch uh, outlets versus the two inch or two and a quarter versus two inch. Anyway, it's got the big ram horns on it. So she's got the high performance manifolds as well. Anyway, less yak and more turning engines over. Here we go. I'm gonna turn it over real slow. You move the pan to wherever the oil's coming out, okay? You're a good helper. All right, turned over slow by hand. Got most of the oil out of the cylinder. Well, not most of it. We got what we can easily get out. I don't want to crank it over fast because we want a little bit of oil in there to build up some compression. And I really don't want to make any more of a mess than we already have. If we're cranking over real fast, that oil's going to go all over either which way. And uh, we don't want to make any more of the mess than we have to. So I'm going to slam those plugs in. And uh, we're going to see what happens. Hopefully it starts and it's real smoky. I don't care if it's smoky or not. I just want it to start. What about you? You sick of this thing? Sick of late models. All right, here goes nothing. Cycle our key. Why isn't our fuel pump pumping? Oh, we have to ground it. I can hear fuel. Definitely get fuel. All right, now she's just gonna light right off. to go
sounds good. Dial in the timing a little bit. Had it way too far retarded. That thing sounds healthy. Better than most our garbage. I'd say she runs pretty good. Uh, we definitely want to get some water hooked up for it. We run too much longer. It's, we didn't even get it that warm. There's not even any steam coming out of the thermostat. But yeah, this thing's, she's peppy. I like it. So I had the customer come over last night. Uh, we talked about what his plans are with this thing, and he wants me to hook cooling system up to it so that you know we can get some heat cycles in there. Hopefully, loosen up those uh, sticky uh, rings, and that way it's we know everything's good, no oil pressure's good, we know it's not overheating. We can flush the cooling system, all that stuff. Uh, so we got to put a short water pump pulley on it. We got to put a fan on it. We gotta put a radiator, some hoses, belts, hook up uh, temp and oil pressure gauges, and then uh, get some runtime on this thing. So that's what we're gonna do. We got a radiator that's been wrapped in paper for nine years now from the last time we moved. We got a whole bunch of belts, and we got some miscellaneous hoses. Hopefully, we don't have to use any flex hoses. So let's uh, let's do this. Oh, also, you can see just how wide. I mean, let, let's let's measure stuff. Let's. Also, you can see just how wide these manifolds are right there. Like, it's about three inches wide. Cross right there. Now let's go look at my 283 out of that 67 Impala poop infested amazingness and you can see it's not even two and a half inches right there so that thing's got the uh the big dog manifolds on it you're the big dog around here i know so we're gonna have to steal this pulley off of this engine i think i got the fan for it somewhere in this mess yep right there and we'll put that on there in a belt and uh, we'll be on the road right not on the road. We'll be making smoke anyway. So, usually to tension a belt, you gotta have a generator, an alternator, tension it up. What I like to do is get just the right belt, and then you roll it on with a fan. Just like you did with your bike chain when you were a kid and you knock it off. You just put it up there and you roll it on. You didn't get the crescent wrench out and strip out your axle bolt in the back of your bike every time, did you? So in order to get the right belt, I think it's a 15380. That's what they used to be in the long water pump days. But uh, we're gonna measure the old tape measure and stick here. And, uh, go for the belt selection, see if we got one. Probably not. Looks like roughly 36 inches. Oh yes, close. So it looks like a 15360 is uh, 36 and 5 eighths inches. So we'll try that. I guess that's going to be too long. Just, just shoot from the hip here. Ooh. Yep, too long. So let's see if we can find like a 350. We got a 15350 in the file, Duff. And then next one I go down is a 15335. Be way too short. Not a chance. Not a chance. Well, either bolt a generator slash all later on here. And find a belt. Joy's living in Podunk. Living in town probably has one. the ticket. Perfect. Now our water pump and our fan should both be turning. So we can knock our fingers off. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have put that on there and just put a box fan in front of it. I like my digits. They're handy. 
It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. So now, we have to figure out a way to get a radiator held in there. It's been so long since I had a radiator in this thing, I don't even really remember how we did it. What do you think of Duff? Bungee cords? Tarp straps. Ratchet straps. I don't know either. I don't know. Let's, let's pop her up there and look at it. Always leave your radiator covered in cardboard or brown paper bag. Oh, you don't screw up the fins. I'm thinking uh, ratchet strap. Oh, money in the bank. I don't know what you're off of, but you are perfect. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Now, I'm just gonna put some clamps on them. We should maybe put some cardboard between our mount and our radiator, because that's not ideal. And then, and we're about ready for some coolant. For that, we should hook up our temp gauge up here. And then our oil gauge back here. Let's find some clamps. Oh yeah, I'll tell them, Duff. So, somebody pointed this out in another video that 327's got this big square spot here, rectangular. My bad. It's always sucked at shapes. I like them round, right, Duff? You don't like my dad jokes either. And then they got this, I don't know, what do you call it? This valley right here, this dimple from side to side and that rectangle. I don't know. And then the uh, 283s are pretty much just flat and have the script on them. You know, they got these two ribs here and then the Chevrolet script. So if a car's never been messed with, yeah, okay, maybe that's possible, but I don't know if those, if that's even true, because I feel like 327s had different valve covers on them as well at times. And uh, after 60 years of being out there and four screws or bolts, I feel like somebody could have swapped those valve covers. So it's not a dead giveaway. And I've never went by that, but this is what the internet says. Everybody get yelled at me because you can't just open in the hood and look at the valve cover and tell what it is. Sure. More rambling. So we need to find a uh, breather plug for the uh, PCV or whatever that is. This is where your temp center goes. Right here, obviously, right next to the water neck. There's going to be coolant right there. And then this is your oil pressure sending unit right back here, right next to the uh, distributor and the coil and the road draft tube. So we're going to put an adapter in there so we can hook this guy up for the oil and then we're going to put an adapter in there so we can hook this guy up for the temp sending unit so we'll have some gauges so we can keep an eye on this thing see if she's uh running cool and uh has good oil pressure so i'm gonna pop those out find some adapters What do you think, Duff? Should we see if it uh, holds water? Oh yeah, we got a Rock Auto box. Radmeter, protector, shimmage mounts in there. See what happens. Oh man, we got our first leak. We gotta plug off the heater hoses. That was a large oversight in my part. So, one's five eighths, one's three quarter. 
So we just put a three quarter hose on there and loop it. I mean, the right thing to do would be to uh, pull those out and put pipe plugs in there, but fittings like everything else cost money. Rubber hoses are cheaper. Now, hopefully, we don't have any more leaks. I know that hose is kinked, but it doesn't need to flow through there. It's just plugging them. You could pull those out, put plugs in there. Be just fine. You don't need to loop them. Not going to affect the cooling system, is it, Duff? Nope, he says. What? You can't be full already. All right, so coolant stopped off. I mean, provided oil didn't evaporate right at the full mark there Got a little leak coming from uh shoot she's coming out of the core well good enough for what we got to do yep it's coming out of the core duff see if we got oil pressure and then we'll maybe run her outside idle her for a bit or do whatever speeds and uh get her up to temp keep an eye on it see what happens Hopefully it starts a little bit easier today. Let's get my HEI ignition wire out of the flywheel. How about that? Is that a good idea? What else is gonna get in there? This guy? Probably. I'll just loop him up here. Good to go. Let's run her outside, get some noise and smoke out there, and see if we can't get some heat into it. I don't know what it's at now. It's probably single digits, but it was negative one degrees Fahrenheit this morning, so it's not warm out there. Where's the rabbits? Huh? Let's get this thing fired up. Oh, oh no. Come on now. Wheel chocks supposed to stay. What are the odds those stay there while it's running? Probably not real good. Yes, lights right off. It's got a little loaf to it. He claims it's got a 350 horse Corvette cam in it for the guy who put it together for him. I don't know, but he said it, it never really sounded like a 350 horse cam. So there might be some speculation. It's got a little loaf to it.
Left her running her for about 15 minutes. We developed an oil leak. I thought it was coming from where the uh, clutch pivot ball is, but there's no oil back there. So I think it's just this valve cover gasket leaking. Imagine that with all that goop on there. So now we're gonna fire it up again and see what it's doing. It was warming up a little bit, but definitely not like it was hot. I think it was only up to 160 at the time. So, see how she starts warm. Where's our keys at, Duff? Ooh. There you go. She creeped a little bit above 190. I'm sure the thermostat could probably use replacing and a good flushing based on what we saw coming out of the uh, water pump when he brought it over. Yeah, that's that's not good looking coolant. But it's cold, it's windy. We'll call him up. He could come uh, hear this thing run for the first time in 43 years. So appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching us get a 300 horse. 327 from a 1962 Impala running. Check out our other videos. Uh, go check out the merchandise. Go check out the Duff Approved. We do uh, a lot of behind the scenes action stuff that we got going on around here. A lot of shenanigans and whatnot. So if you want to join that, that would be cool. Duff would much appreciate that, wouldn't you, pal? Support our sandwich and treat addiction. Speaking of that, is it too early to have a sandwich? No such thing. All right. Remember, it doesn't matter you get it done, as long as you're having fun. This thing would be rowdy fun. We have something to put it in. Don't you think? Where's the rabbits? What if we put that thing in a Bronco? Ooh. Really need a V8 and Casper over there too. There you go. Here's the keys. You can have the honors. I imagine it's a little out. You've never, you've never started anything with this. Short across the solenoid. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, fire whatever's handy. Just give her a crank, yep. huh? So when did you pull the engine out? Uh, not last summer, summer before. Oh, just recently then. Yes. Shoot the windows out? So did you do the racing stripes? Yeah, don't you like that? <laughs> Good old black tape. Oh, really? That's, that's, that's not vinyl, huh? Had the seats redone. I might have to do that again, will you? Oh yeah. <laughs>
console three speed car. Yeah, it was on the tree. Oh, it was a. Yeah. So it was a super sport with a three speed on the tree. Yeah, on the tree, yep. And then I, I just converted it. Put like a Mr. Gasket or some yeah, type of. Whatever it was. Shifted pretty well. Uh, so was it all white then? Or did it, was it, did it have a vinyl top? It, it oh. was this color. Ah, uh, the vinyl top, I bought it from a used car dealership and they had put the vinyl top on it. Oh, okay. Painted it by nice yellow. Here's the color right here. It was yep. anniversary gold. Oh, like that, like that fawn? Color? Yeah. yeah. They called it anniversary gold and it was uh, in 62, I think Chevy or GMC, one of them was uh, 100 years old, so. Thank you.